All right, well, I am by myself for today's haul video, but we are going to talk about everything that Andrew and I got at the antique shop the other day. So we've got quite a few items here out in front of us. Our total spend was $294, I do believe. But we bought a sword, which we actually immediately flipped because it was for somebody, and I believe we spent $70 for that. So our total spend was more like $224 on everything on the table here in front of us. So we're gonna go through all this stuff. We're gonna talk a little bit about what it is and what we can expect to get for it. But before we get into that, uh, as many of you know, I have Casey working for us now. You probably remember her from back in the Goodwill videos when I would be like, Casey, can you turn down the music? It's really loud. Um, she's been doing a little bit of picking herself and she was out the other day and found something phenomenal. And I said, give me that, I need to show it in a video. Uh, but I said it a lot nicer than that. It was more like, hey, KC, let me show that in a video because I really need to. And of course, she let me show it in a video. Check this out. It is a phone cord purse. Now, those of you who haven't been with the channel for a while probably have no idea what this is because that was like one of my earliest videos where Andrew and I were at the thrift store and we came across a phone cord purse for $5 um, and we ended up selling it for I believe 85 bucks. They sell for pretty good money. Ours was smaller. Um, it wasn't in the best of shape, but these phone cord purses can be worth pretty good money and Casey found this one for a remarkable deal. She only paid $10 for it. It is black and white, which personally I like more than the colorful one, I think. Uh, and it's in really good shape. So she was so proud. She sent me a picture and I'm like, I cannot believe you just found that. So very proud of Casey. And I just wanted to show off her handiwork. So um, she did find this. I think we're going to be listing this up on our eBay, but it is a black and white phone cord purse. So that is awesome. Good job, Casey. So anyway, now let's talk about some of the stuff that we got at the antique shop. Uh, we, I don't even know where to start. I guess we'll start from the very beginning. I had picked up this Lennox bird, which we had one of these recently that was very similar. And it wasn't this exact pose, but it was, it was the same. And it has the green Lennox mark, which is, I believe, mid-century. And they sell for about $20. We paid around five dollars for our no it was five dollars forty percent off so we paid less than five dollars for it um i am none of this stuff has tags on it so the stuff that i do remember i'm going by memory um but just keep in mind what our total spend was so those sell for about twenty dollars and that's about where we're at with that we also got these hager planters we got these two matching Hager planters. Oh, by the way, Ashton is homesick, so you're hearing him in the background. Quiet on the set. He wanted to sit through the video, so he's over there. Um, we got these two Hager planters. They are storks. They were more than likely florist pieces that were gifted as baby shower items. And they probably had a nice arrangement in them. One for boys, one for girls. Uh, we paid... I want to say four dollars a piece for these i would expect to get about ten dollars a piece they're not super valuable um but they're royal hager well they're hager not royal hager they're hager pieces there is a difference between hager and royal hager just for the record but they are hager pottery and um i can't say no <laughs> so we ended up grabbing those in addition to this, which is a larger version, also Hager pottery with a stork, and it has, I guess you would say a crib. Uh, this piece right here actually has the original Hager sticker, and this piece right here, I would probably expect 18 to 22 for this one, because it is larger, and it's got the stork on there. It is blue, more than likely for a boy, but it was probably also a florist piece, so it would have been gifted, probably had an arrangement. A lot of the Hager pieces were florist pieces. So, uh, what else did we grab? Let's talk about our book ends. Eek, all right. So we grabbed these kitty book ends out of one of my, oh, look, I have them turned backwards for you guys. <laughs> we grabbed these kitty book ends out of one of my favorite booths there at Lemoyne. And they are made in Japan. 
Uh, some of the paint is wearing a little bit, but they're for the most part void of chips and cracks. There is a chip on the back of this one, which we noted in the listing, but these will typically sell for about 30 to $35. And that's what comps say. That's not just what I'm making up. Um, there was a very, there, there was a, the same pair sold for, I can't remember if it was 30 or 35. So that's right around what I would expect for those. And we paid, I believe 15, but it was 10% off. So we're going to do okay on those as well. Let's talk about our art glass. We have two art glass bowls. Now these were marked $40. I would not have paid $40 for these. However, they were half off. So they were $20, which is still a little bit much. Um, and I kind of hemmed and hawed over it. I know that I could double my money on them and that's why I ended up, if they were $40, obviously I wouldn't because that's double 20. But <laughs> um, at half off, I knew I could double my money. But they are Murano and one of the ways we could tell that is because they have these gold or copper flecks in there. I don't know if the light's gonna pick those up, but they both have it. One has super fine, almost sand-like flecks, and the other one, the flecks are a little bit larger, almost like glitter. So Murano was the only glass, Mur the island of Murano. Murano didn't actually make glass. It's the island of Murano, but there are glass houses on Murano, and they were really the only ones who, who, had, uh, who had mastered the technique of adding the gold and copper and silver up until I think about the 1970s. And feel free to correct me in the comments. This is just something I've heard and I am repeating. Um, and I've done that before and been wrong. So <laughs> feel free to correct me if I'm incorrect. Uh, but anyway, so these pieces right here, Murano, uh, I did have that confirmed. But I knew that myself because of that information that I had heard. So I knew I could double my, at least double my money on those. We had sold one of the tannish pieces just about a week ago for $40. Um, this one is a different shape. So we're doing all right on those, I believe. But anyway, uh, what else do we have? We've got this owl. We do really well with these owls. They are carved and then they are, the wood is burned. I believe they are made in Japan and the wood is a crypto or something like that. Um, at one point I did know the name of the company who made it and I honestly, I cannot find that information again, which is a little frustrating. Um, but, but the name of the wood is crypto something, something, something. Um, we had a little one about this big that sold for $20. So when I spotted this guy who's a little bit bigger, I thought, you know, we could do all right on that. So I ended up grabbing this and I would expect to get 20 to 25 for him because of his size. I couldn't imagine finding one larger than him, but I do know they exist. <laughs> so he's all right. I like him. Let's talk about. Now, Sue picks these up a lot. These are little condiment sets. We have a salt and a pepper and a little jar in the middle, which could have held mustard or possibly jam or jelly. Uh, these are Noritake and they're a peach luster, which is this kind of iridescent peach color, but they have the blue that contrasts with the peach, which really appealed to me as well as, of course, this little bluebird perched on top. Of course, I'm gonna say yes to the bird. I mean, come on. So I really liked this set uh, because of the bird and I just, I had to have it. But normally I don't purchase these. These are more of a Sioux thing, but this one I made an exception for. for. For that piece right there, I would expect probably to get about $30 for. They don't typically sell for a lot of money, um, but I think that the fact that it's unique with the bird, it's going to sell for a little bit more. So that was a good piece. We've got this right here. Now this is a Limoges piece and it is hand painted with raspberries on it. And it is marked on the bottom TNV, which stands for Tressman and Vote. 
and it is also marked Limoges. Now, similar to Murano, Limoges is a city in France. It is not like Limoges, you know? Um, so TNV was one of the companies in Limoges that was producing porcelain in China. So this piece right here is a cash pot, and I learned this from my viewers, a cash pot or a jardinier. I just butchered that, thank you. Uh, but but it's for, for a planter of, for a flower pot, and you would just plant flowers in it. Or raspberries, perhaps. I, I honestly, what are you doing? He's frustrated because he can't be in the video. He's mad. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how big a raspberry plant gets. Maybe it wouldn't even fit in here. I don't know. I don't do gardening. It's not a thing for me. Uh, <laughs> so we got that. I just really like that piece also have this guy. Now you've seen one of these on my channel recently and actually it was the same exact shape as this. I was actually comparing the listings and it had the same exact shape. Um, it has a hole in the bottom. This one is actually marked Nippon. The other one was not marked but it had the same shape. Now, the reason it has the hole in the bottom is because it's either for condensed or evaporated milk. Um, there was a ton of discrepancy in the comments, uh, and I couldn't really find anything online because, again, there was a discrepancy. I, I guess the condensed milk is sweeter than the evaporated milk, but it was at a time where milk was scarce, and so people were using condensed or evaporated milk in their coffee, and they would just stick the whole can in there. And because the can was unsightly, they had these, and to get the can out, you would, you know, poke it out through the hole and pull the can out. That is its function. Uh, but unlike the last one we sold, this one has a plate. So we've got the underplate on that. And these will typically sell with the underplate for $25 to $30. So I was pretty thrilled when I found that. And I do think we paid $10 for that one. So I was pleased with that. Let's talk about our little dish. Now, if you've been watching my channel for very long, you have seen this dish over and over again every time we go to that antique shop. And it's been there repeatedly over and over again. And I always go and look at it. And I've passed it up a few times because there is a small little chip on it. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it because it's one of those chips where for $15, it's hard, it's hard to pay $15 for something with a chip that isn't just minuscule. It's, it's a little bit of too much of a chip for $15. But it just sat there and sat there and sat there. And it's such a beautiful piece that I finally decided, you know what, I'm gonna buy this for 15. I feel like I could sell it for 20, cover my fees, and it can go on to someone who can use it and who can appreciate it. Where are you going? Oh, you wanna sit there, okay. Um, so it's got butterflies on it. It's got really heavy gold. There is no manufacturer mark on this. However, it is marked by the artist who decorated it. A lot of these pieces were blanks and they were decorated by an artist separately. So this piece was decorated by Lucille M. Eagle or, or? I'll read it. You'll read it? Okay, Ashton, you wanna make a guest appearance? What does this say? Lucille M. Eagle. Eagle? What's yeah. that date right there? 1923. 1923. I'll go, go sit in your chair, okay. <laughs> so there you have it. 1923 was the year that this was painted. So I just love this piece. I'm assuming it's a nappy dish of some sort. A lot of these pieces were used for lemons, uh, but I would think you could use it next to the, the next to the blah, blah, blah. Can't even talk. Next to the sink for soap is what I was going to say. Or, you know, on your dresser and just throw earrings in it. I mean, it has multi-purposes and I love seeing these pieces repurposed. I mean, a lot of these pieces are just so beautiful and they deserve to be repurposed. So we grabbed this puppy dog and we've had one similar before. I believe we paid 20 for this. It was 60% off. I'm not sure how much that works out to, but we had one similar in the past and I believe it sold for 12 to $15. So again, not a huge turnaround on this, but I just liked him a lot. And I knew that somebody out there would appreciate him. 
more than he was being appreciated sitting in an antique shop. So here we go, here we are. Um, so I really liked this guy. I don't know, I just, I love that his eyes are just dots. I mean, there's some realistic figurines that I pick up and then there's some that are just like cartoonish and I think that's the case for him. Better turn this off. Another puppy dog we got out of that same booth for 60% off was this guy. And I believe he's an Airedale Terrier, uh, but there are no markings on him. He's very detailed, so I'm not sure um, if he's Japan or not. Couldn't say for certain. But he does have a lot of crazing and he's very handsome. So I decided to grab him. I would expect probably to get eight to 12 for him. That's usually where our figurines about this size fall into. Uh, so let's talk a little real quick about this giant cookie jar. <laughs> you can hold a lot of cookies in there. You can hold, yeah, a lot of cookies in there. That's a lot of cookies. It's probably like two bags of Oreos, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and they would match, too, because it's black and white. So this right here took quite a bit of research uh, because the mark on the bottom, a lot of you had commented on the video as to what you believed the mark was. And I don't think anyone got it right. <laughs> oh, you're coming into the video now. All right, all right. Okay. Gotta be quiet, though. Um, so I think a lot of people commented and um, what was frustrating about this cookie jar is the one night I was researching something else and the maker of this cookie jar pops up and I didn't screenshot it. I just looked at it and said, oh, I can remember that. And so the next night it came time to list it and I couldn't remember who the maker was. And I was so frustrated over it <laughs> and I ended up posting it in my Facebook group and somebody ended up coming I can't, I'm sorry I can't remember who it was but they they ended up coming up with the name finding one similar and saying you know and it's Delome which I would have never in a million years figured that out but it was an almost identical cookie jar so that's what it is but it's very heavy pottery so if you look at the shipping costs I think it's a little bit more but it's just it's so heavy and so large. Like Ashton said, you could fit like two bags of Oreos in there. <laughs> so, so, um, so I would expect that piece to probably go for 40 to $45. And I believe we paid half that. So last but not least, I think that's all of the stuff that we just picked up from the random booths. We started going through some like <coughs> bowls and stuff of, of three for five. And we ended up with, we ended up spending $30 and I think we got 18 items. So we got a ton of different things. Um, and I don't even think I grabbed them all when I was just grabbing stuff for this haul video, but we got a ton of little pictures. And the reason I grabbed all these smalls is because, you know, the smalls can go anywhere from five to $15. And when you're paying just three for five, I figured we couldn't really go wrong. So I picked out the ones that I thought were good, so especially this little Franciscan uh, pottery. Uh, you're familiar with Desert Rose, um, the apple that was in our recent hoarder basement video. We got the little toothpick holder, um, but I saw the Franciscan little, I thought it was a fridge, but my research says it's for jam or jelly. I don't know if I believe that because it doesn't have a little notch for a spoon. Uh, but I figured I could get probably about 12 to 15 just for this piece. So <laughs> I, fig I figured we were going to do all right. And we're doing okay with the smalls, uh, especially the little lamp. I had a hard time parting with that. There was a little lamp with a bunny hugging it. And I, I think it ended up in one of the boxes that went up to the, the room to be shipped. Um, but I had a hard time listing that one because it was like this represents me it's so cute it's a bunny and a lamp and i love it uh but no i totally listed that it was a hard one to let go but you can't keep everything so um i think we're gonna do all right on all of that i would expect us to at least double our money on all of the smalls maybe even triple it i don't know if i'm that optimistic uh but definitely double it and uh, yeah, so I think we're gonna do all right on all of this stuff that we got at the antique shop. And um, 
I was pretty pleased. You know, the stuff at the antique shop is, is totally different than the stuff at the thrift store. But the way that I look at it is I'm spending more per item, but it's, it's oftentimes better quality than the thrift store. And you know, I could pay, I could spend $20 at a thrift store or $20 in an antique shop, you know, $20 on a bunch of little items at the thrift store and I can make $100. Or I could spend $20 on a really good item at the antique shop and make $100. You know, it really, it just depends. Ooh, as I smack my cookie jar. It really just depends, you know, on, on where you need to go and where you're sourcing and what you're doing. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Andrew is currently out with Eric right now at an auction and they are going to be there all day, all night, probably until around 11 o'clock or midnight, but they left this morning at 8 a.m. So it's a long day and uh, <laughs> what are you doing? This kid, got, I got a call from the school that he had a fever, so. 99.2. 99.2, just a little bit of a fever and they sent him home. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm still filming this video even if you're here. And hopefully he feels better soon. But um, anyway, hopefully uh, he gets better soon. But anyway, we're gonna go over, pick up his sister, and then we're gonna go tour the building. This is a horror mode. And we will see you guys tomorrow. And this is a <laughs> Later. horror. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. <laughs>